very sole purpose is to ride, check the bro. So long, we've been on the test, can't go home, we'll know what's wrecked, they got us on. All these drugs are such to the point, we don't give a All right, all praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to go ahead and get started uh, with our lesson for tonight that is a part of a uh, what we're calling a mini-series of Jacob and the Twelve Patriarchs. So we've already done Reuben, and tonight we're going to be going over Simeon. Um, and so from before, uh, we took a look at uh, Jacob before he passed. He foretold what would happen to his 12 sons um, in the end. And so we've been stepping through each one of the brothers' um, uh, last testament, so to speak, or last, uh, uh, yeah, testament. And uh, tonight we're going to be going over Simeon. So um, I got my brother uh, Yeshiran here. My name yeah. is Brother Zay and Khan. So you got some, uh, you want to go ahead and get started with those, those verses that you had up? Okay, you yeah. Go ahead with, uh, Romans. All right. All, right. All praises. Uh, we're going to start off in the book of Romans, chapter 15, and verse 4. And it reads, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Con, con. So we bring this out every time we uh, do a lesson and discussion because everything that was written in this book was written for our learning, our learning. This is our history book. You can go to these scriptures anywhere and find comfort, right? Find peace because there's not a situation or circumstance that one of our forefathers or foremothers have not went through. There's nothing new under the sun. So yeah. this is a foundational scripture that we always bring out because it sets the foundation for us. So, Khan. Khan. All right, so I'm going to start off in uh, a couple of verses in the book of Proverbs. First, I'm going to start off with the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 7, because uh, as Israelites, we always supposed to get counsel. The father is supposed to always tell their sons, their children, uh, give them instructions, give them, them the instructions to life, because like the scripture says, a child will always go straight. A child will always go left. So it is up to the father and the mother, but mainly the father to set the tone in the house, to lay down the law. And that's what we were, we as men were commanded to do for our households, uh, teach these laws diligently to our children. And that they can teach them to their children and so forth and so on. And we see what we're missing in today's society that's no longer being taught. Not God's, God's laws. What's being taught are the, the, the ways of the world. And when we teach our people the ways of the world, this is the, the society that we get. Unruly children that don't respect elders. They don't respect yep. the, the, their parents. And that's in the top 10. Honor thy mother and thy father. But since the parents are too busy trying to be these children's friend, friend, all that go out the door. You know what I'm saying? Trying to buy their children's love instead of teaching them God's law, statutes, commandments, so they can earn his love or show God love. I'm going to start off in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. And it reads, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father. And he will show thee thy elders and they will tell thee. So again, the fathers are the ones that are supposed to be setting the tone in the house, laying down God's law. Nothing that not on the under our own, leaning into our own understanding. We are to try to line up to the scriptures as close as possible. And it is written right here in this book. So all we got to do is read, right? So I'm going to go wow. to the book of Proverbs chapter 11. And verse 14, and it reads, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. safety. So again, we lack counsel. We as a people, not, we have counsel, but of the world. And when you get counsel of the world, you get that, out, that outcome, a worldly outcome. Not a godly outcome, not a spiritual outcome. You get a worldly outcome. And uh, before we was re we was watching, we was watching the video earlier. Me and my wife was right. And this uh, yep. lady, this young lady do that did the video. She was showing how the pastors was preaching that you don't have to keep God's laws, and Jesus came and fulfilled, and 
a bunch of madness. So mm -hmm. again, that's of the world. That's that pastor leaning into his own understanding. understanding. And like the scripture says, woe unto you that scatter the flock. Woe unto you. So as a parent, oh, did you? Yeah, I'm coming back on. I'm on my phone. Okay. So yeah. as a <laughs> so as a parent, it oh. is we will be held accountable because what's that Proverbs 2026? 20, Let me grab that real quick. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. And it reads, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the Bible tells us, God tells us to train up our children in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they shall not depart from it. But what we're doing is we're training up our children as to be worldly. We're training up our children to be our friend. And I'm going to say what my mom always told us. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to be friend. I'm not here to be friend. And my mom used to always say that her household was a dictatorship. When we're dealing with the Most High God's laws, his laws, he is a dictator. He, his, he changes not. This is not a democracy dealing with the most high God. Nobody, it's not the 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 what's that, the majority rule? No, it's one rule with God. Christ had Christ fell in order. We gotta fall in line. He don't change. And we better be glad that he don't change because the scripture says, What? I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Are not consumed. Because if he did change, all of us deserve to be dead. Be done. That grace and mercy be done. You know what I'm saying? That grace and mercy be done. So let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 14. Can you read? Uh -huh. Where no counsel is, oh, I already read that. I'm reading it again, though. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of the counselors, they are safe. So what we're reading is the, uh, the, the, the 12 tribes, the fathers on their deathbed, just like Jacob at the beginning, when he was on his deathbed, he told all his sons, what will be the fault befalling them? Now, each individual son is telling their families where they went wrong in life, what they did right and what they did wrong. And and Reuben, oh my goodness, that was a deep one. So if y'all haven't watched that, go back and watch Reuben because Reuben he put it all out there. He put, put it all, it all out, out there. there. And that's what and that's what we and that's what we have to do as parents to our children. Mm -hmm. We can't sugarcoat or hide nothing. I don't hide nothing from what I did in, in the past to my to my children, so that they can learn from where I went wrong. I can't sit up here. It just like even when we go out there on the highways and byways, I always tell the people I'm not getting up here trying to act like I'm holy than that. Holy than them. Yeah. No, your life has to be a testimony, right? Mm -hmm. Our lives has to be a testimony. The things that we did. That's why the Bible, but the book says proper uh, what's that Romans 15 and verse 4 was written for our learning. Everything that I did is written, it was done. That's why God chose certain people. He, he ain't choosing no, no person that never been through nothing. So your life has to be a testimony. So that somebody that went through what you I mean is going through what you going that you went through, they can learn from your mistakes. Damn, he made it. I can make it too. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have to be an open book to our people. We can't hide anything. You know what I'm saying? It, it, we can't be embarrassed of the thing of the things that we've done in the past because everybody has what? Everybody has skeletons in their closets. But it's uh -huh. all about, yeah, it's all about the the lifting up of the next generation. So that they won't have to go through the things that we went through. Proverbs chapter two, I'm going to start at verse one. It says, my son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thine incline thine ears unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seeketh, as, seeketh her as silver, and searches uh -huh. for her as for hid treasure. Then shall I understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He lived up sound wisdom for the righteous. I'm going to read that part again. 
Mm. Give up sound wisdom for the righteous. The righteous are those that are keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Those are the ones that get the wisdom. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Uprightly. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the ways of his saints, of mm -hmm. his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. All praises to the Most High. We want to continue going to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, mm -hmm. 1 through 6. And it reads, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Mm. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and God and man. Trust in the Most High with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he Jesus. shall direct thy path. I uh, same chapter, Proverbs uh, chapter 3, 11 through 17. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects. Mm. Just like a parent. If you, I see some, some of my friends, their parents couldn't give a damn what they did. And a lot of them ended up in prison. Yep. I used to be like, I used to be like envious of that when I was a child. Damn, yep. they, they ain't got no curfew. They get bad grades, no getting no ass whooping. Man, I had to be yep. in, the, in the house when them lights came on and buy the bad report card. There wasn't no outside. My yep. boss used to stay in the shed so long that the ties went flat because my mama wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I was envying my friends that didn't have no, didn't have no guidance. Structure. Didn't have no structure. But a mm. good father or a good parent will give that. What, what the Most High God said? For whom the Lord love, he correct. Correct it. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that find wisdom and the man that getteth mm -hmm. understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise oh, of, again, silver. of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst mm. desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her sight. Is I mean, it's like it. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths of peace, right? Now, that's oh. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Mm. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. All right, Proverbs chapter 1, I mean chapter 5, verse 1. My son, attain unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. And last but not least, Proverbs chapter 7, starting at verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. I'm going to say that again. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinsmen. All praise um, to the Most High. So the Most High God, through our fathers, through our elders, have been giving us instructions from the beginning. We turn our backs to God because when we in sin, we turn away from God and he turns away from us. But the instructions are, are always here in this book. I'm going to read one more uh, book of Revelations, chapter one. And uh, but what they say, reading is fundamental. It's fundamental. Reading is fundamental. So the book and there's, um, Revelation, I mean, yeah, Revelation chapter one and verse three. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy 
and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. All right, uh, you got it from here. All right, come. Oh, praise to the most high. Con. So we're going to go ahead and get in started with the testament of the 12 patriarchs. So um, as the brother was bringing out, um, as the brother was bringing out all of the scriptures about wisdom, right, um, coming from a father, instruction. And so now we're going to dive into uh, Simeon's, his um, actual um, testimony here from the testament of the 12 patriarchs. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So it says here, this is the testament of Simeon, the second of Jacob and Leah. And it says here, verse one, the copy of the words of Simeon, the things which he spake to his sons before he died. So this goes back to what we read in uh, Genesis 49, correct? Huh. So that's that corroborates this, this scripture here. All right. Verse two, in the hundred and twentieth year of his life, at which time Joseph, his brother, died. For when Simeon was sick, his sons came to visit him and he strengthened himself and sat up and kissed them and said, hearken, my children, to Simeon, your father. And I will declare unto you what things I have in my heart. I was born of Jacob as my father's second son. And my mother Leah called me Simeon because the Lord had heard her prayer. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it, uh, ain't that uh, what his name mean, if I'm not mistaken? I, I, had and, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I'm good. Okay, Con. Moreover. I became strong exceedingly. I shrank from no achievement, nor was I afraid of nothing. For my heart was hard and my liver was immovable and my bowels without compassion. Because valor also has been given from the most high to men in soul and body. For in time of my youth, I was jealous in many things of Joseph because my father loved him beyond beyond all and I set my mind against him to destroy him because the prince of the seat sent forth the spirit of jealousy and blinded my mind so that I, I so that I regarded him not as a brother nor did I even speak nor did I spare even Jacob, my father. But his God and the God of his fathers sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. For when I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks and Reuben to Dothan, where were our necessaries and all our stores? Judah, my brother sold him to the Ishmaelites. So, Khan, I want to stick a pen in right here right, really quick because this gives a lot of more detail uh, for those of us who have read the story of Joseph and how his brothers are the one that put him in jail. I mean, not jail, but put him in the um in the hole. that pit. Yeah, that pit. So they put him in the pit. And so it says here that uh, Simeon had a jealousy towards Joseph. And we know this, you know, as growing up, if you have any siblings, you usually have sibling rivalry, yeah. right? Well, my mama like him more than me or daddy like him more than me. And and he, he always favor you, it's favoritism, right? And so the scripture says here that the spirit of jealousy came upon him. And so um, for those of you, uh, we've been talking a lot in this month here about demonic entities and spirits. So we want to make sure, go watch that video um, on demonic entities or sleep paralysis. Uh -huh. You got anything up? No, nah, go ahead. Come. So it says here, um, but his God and the, I'm starting at verse uh, seven. For in the time of my youth, I was jealous in many things of Joseph because my father loved him beyond all. 
And I set my mind against him to destroy him because the prince of deceit sent forth the spirit of jealousy and blinded my mind. So I regarded him not as a brother, nor did I spare even Jacob, my father, but his God, the God of his fathers sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. For when I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks and Reuben to Dothan, where were our necessaries and all our stores? Judah, my brother, sold him to the Ishmaelites. And when Reuben heard of these things, he was grieved, for he wished to restore him to his father. But on hearing this, I was exceedingly wroth against Judah and that he let him go away alive. Wow. And for five months, I continued wrathfully against him. But the Lord restrained me and withheld from me the power of my hands. For my heart, Salakia, for my right hand was half withered for seven days. And I knew my children, and Slakia, and I knew my children that because of Joseph, this had befallen me. And I repented and wept. And so I guess we'll stop right here just kind of because it's see, like we talked about the sibling rivalry, right? Mm -hmm. Um I guess because of Judah and uh, Reuben um, doing what apparently he wanted to kill him. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody ever had that type of relationship with a sibling, right? Where you had that just that type of. I, matter of fact, I'm, I'm glad I glad I mentioned that because I seen a video online of a young lady whose face had got acid on it, mm -hmm. and she making from the hospital bed. Someone had poured acid on her, like on her face. And she said that it was my sister. Wow. My sister did this. And she was like, man, it hurt me to my heart. When people see me like this and they ask who did this, you said my sister. And so we have to understand the spirit of jealousy and envy amongst our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. right? Even our biological brothers and sisters, right? Is the same spirit that came between Cain and Abel, God. right? And he killed his brother. Yeah. And so we have to understand that by listening to this testimony of Simeon, then take heed. Unfortunately, today in 2024, that still goes on. Con, you got anything up? No, no go ahead. Huh? It still goes on. And so it says here, the Lord delivered Joseph out of his hand because he wanted to kill him. And because Judah let him go free or alive to the slave traders, right? He mm -hmm. wanted to hurt him. He got mad at him. So we'll go continue at uh verse 12. Hey, let, let, me, let, let me let me uh interject real quick and read something that's gonna line up with what you're saying. I'm in the book huh. of Genesis, chapter 37, and I'm gonna start at verse 3. It says, uh, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that saw that their father favored him more than all his brethren. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Mm. So again, we see that run through a lot of families, a lot of that civil, um, they call that civil uh, robbery. And it's, uh, and if you don't, and if you don't Bastard. catch it, it can, it can end tragic. And we know a lot of these tales where a lot of these children, especially an older child when they get a younger sibling, because that older child was like my mom said, when that she brought me home from the hospital, my older brother tried to kill me. She called him. Mm -hmm. I was I, he was three when I was a itty bitty baby, but he tried to take me out because he wasn't the baby no more. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's that's that that's that thing that. That we have in us that 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 evil spirit that uh Adam left within all of us, that little piece that's in us. So it is sad, but it happens through all, uh -huh. the, through all the families that happens. All right, go ahead. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, and so we want to be mindful of that and rebuke that type of spirit and uh, assess ourselves to make sure that spirit is not using us to do that type of sin. Okay. So um, I'm going to continue here at verse 12. And this, it says here, and for five months, I continued wrathfully against him, referring to Judah, but the Lord restrained me and withheld from me the power of my hands for my right hand was half withered for seven days. And I knew my children that because of Joseph, this had befallen me. So he knew automatically this was punishment for mm -hmm. from the most high God, the tragic event that happened to him. And I repented and wept. And I besought the Lord that my hand might be restored. And that I might hold aloof from all pollution and envy and from all folly. For I knew that I had devised an evil thing before the Lord. And Jacob, my father, on account of Joseph, my brother, in that I envied him. And now my children hearken unto me. This is the third passage. And now my children hearken unto me and beware of the spirit of deceit mm. and envy. Mm. Okay. What we call jealousy. Yeah. Right. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man mm. and suffereth him neither to eat nor to drink nor to do any good thing but it ever suggests suggesteth to him to destroy him that he envieth and so long as he that is envied flourisheth he that envieth fadeth away hmm. hey let me let me, let, let, me yeah. let me read some uh, real quick uh, uh the book of mark chapter 7 verse 21 and it reads, for from within, out of the heart of man, we do not the heart, speaking of your mind, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blaspheme, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Fine. So uh, that's a complete list right there. And that includes envy. That includes anything that is evil um, that when you, when you uh, read the scriptures. And so all of that comes from within a man. And that's what defiles you. That's what defiles your spirit. Mm -hmm. So here you have uh, Simeon saying that envy ruleth the whole mind. And it suffers him not to eat or drink. It won't allow you to eat or drink or to do anything. Mm -hmm. But it suggests to him that he destroy him. And it says here, as long as that person uh, continues to flourish, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what's that word? Uh, be successful, right? Mm -hmm. The envieth falleth, fadeth away. So you fading away, but this person continues to get like they're going up and up in status and, and uh, recognition. The person that you envy. And so... Uh, I just want to point that out because that, like I said, man, that civil and robbery is dangerous. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, um, this is giving us further insight into the spirit of envy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continue here. It says two years. Therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting mm, in years. the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I learned that deliverance from envy cometh by the fear of God. For if a man flee to the Lord, the evil spirit will want to run away from him. Mm. And his mind is lightened. And henceforth, he sympathizeth with me. Salakia, he sympathizeth with him whom he envied and forgiveth those who are hostile to him and so ceases from his envy. Mm. Verse, uh, the fourth passage. And my father asked, asked concerning me, Salakia, and my father 
asked concerning me because he saw that I was sad. And I said unto him, I am pained in my liver. For I mourned more than they all because I was guilty of selling of the selling of Joseph. And when we went down into Egypt and he bound me as a spy, I knew that I was suffering justly mm. and I grieved not. Now, Joseph was a good man and his and had the spirit of God within him. Being compassionate and pitiful, he bore no malice against me, but loved me even as the rest of his brethren. Beware, therefore, my children, of all jealousy and envy, and walk in singleness of soul and with good heart, keeping in mind Joseph your father's brother, that God may give you also grace and glory and blessing upon your heads, even as ye saw in Joseph's case. All his days, he reproached us not concerning this thing, but loved us as his own soul. And beyond his own sons glorified us, and gave us riches and cattle and fruits. So it seems here that uh, it's saying here that Joseph wasn't even mad at him or in the, maybe not in the he sense that he, he, let, he it let it go, basically. Yeah, that's, that's, the, best, the, that's the best way to do it. And that's the same thing that we're supposed to do. If we tell somebody we forgive them, we can't be throwing it back. Well, it's a scripture and uh, it says you're not supposed to make mention of that again, right? That's yep. in what that said. That's in uh, the book of Jer Ezekiel, I think, chapter eighteen. Let me grab that real quick. Mm, you're right here. He's the book of Ezekiel, chapter eighteen, and verse twenty-one. It said, "But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him." In his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. So if you tell somebody you forgive them, you're not supposed to, when you get mad at them, hey, remember that time you did, you know what I'm saying? Yep. That means you haven't yep. forget, gave that person because you, it's still on your heart. It's still in your yep. mind. And the first chance they, the first time they, they make you mad again, you're going to throw that bike up at them. Yep. So that's not, that's not, uh, that's not true forgiveness. That, that's like, <clears throat> we ask God to forgive us. But he gonna throw up our, our past transgressions and our face at us. God don't do that. God mm -hmm. said your slate is white clean. It's white clean. That's how we supposed to do one another, and that's what Joseph did right here. Con, that's what Joseph did, and so he set a good example here uh, for us saints on mm -hmm. how to forgive even when the people are guilty. Con, you know Simeon said that he was guilty of it. And because of that, he was afflicted. And so that goes to show us now that sin has an actual effect on you. Mm -hmm. He had to pay for that. His hand got with it. This and this <laughs> happened. A misfortune. We would call that misfortune, right? Some yeah. misfortune that happened to him. But no, it's because of his sin. And then, and so, we, can, and then we can see a pattern just like uh, Reuben. What happened to him? He got that STD. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That we got to suffer for our sins. Okay, you repented. Reuben repented. He acknowledged he is his wrong, but you still going to be punished. You still yeah. got to be punished. We serve a just God. Just God. Seven months. Come. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Y'all go back. He had an STD for seven months. His loin, he smote his loins, his, mm -hmm. his lower region. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, 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 a and I'm going to put that out there. STD rates are so high. HIV yeah. rates are so high. And mm -hmm. you people talk about HIV. Man, listen here. Y'all better repent for you what you're doing. Because the Most High sees the fornication. He sees the adultery. He sees the sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. And it has a judgment. Keep playing. All right. All right. Come. So do ye also, my children... Love each one his brother with a good heart, and the spirit of envy will love will withdraw from you. 
I'm going to read that again. Do ye also, my children, love each one his brother with a good heart, and the spirit of envy will withdraw from you. For this maketh savage the soul and destroyeth the body. Mm. It causeth anger and war in the mind mm. and stirreth up unto deeds of blood. So you're going to be thinking about doing something to this person or your brother or your sister or those those really violent thoughts start going through your head. This is what he's what saying. Yeah. yeah, what I'm going to do to him, right? And he's saying when that, when you notice that, you have to be aware of that because you can't catch yourself and come out of that unless you're aware. Mm -hmm. This is bringing awareness to what is going through your head. Mm -hmm. So he says here, it starts war in the mind and stirreth up the deeds of blood and leadeth the mind into frenzy and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Mm -hmm. Moreover, it taketh away sleep and causes tumult to the soul and trembling to the body for even in sleep some malicious jealousy deluding him gnaweth and with wicked spirits disturbeth his soul and causeth the body to be troubled and waketh the mind from sleep and confusion and as a wicked and poisonous spirit so appeareth it to men. The fifth passage. Therefore was Joseph comely in appearance and goodly to look upon because no wickedness dwelt in him. For some of the trouble of the spirit, the face manifested. Mm. I'm going to read that again. Therefore was Joseph comely in his appearance and good to look upon because no wickedness dwelt in him. For some of the trouble of the spirit, the face manifested. Mm. And now, my children, uh, uh, you get something from that up? Uh? Yeah, I'm getting something for it. Keep going. Yeah. And, the, and now, my children, make your hearts good before the Lord and your ways straight before men. And ye shall find grace before the Lord and men. Beware, therefore, of fornication. Here we go again. For fornication is mother of all evils. Huh. Separating from God. And bringing near to Belar. For I have seen it inscribed in the writing of Enoch that your son shall be corrupted in fornication and shall do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. Right. Yeah, I got that, uh, that one scripture where it says a man shall be known by his looks, right? You can tell yep. a person continence, right? Uh, the book of yep. Sirach, chapter 19, verse 29, it says, man be, it's like it, a man be, may be known by his look. And and one that have the understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him. So we you you can tell what's on the person's mind by the by the facial expression. They might not be saying nothing, but you can tell what's on their mind just by that look they have on their face, or they got their face all balled up. Or if they happy, you know what I'm saying? So again, that's how we can know people. A man's attire and excessive laughter and go. Show what he is. So God. that facial expression shows what he is. If he's angry, God, if he's wicked, all that shows in the face. They ain't got to open their mouth. You can just tell what's going on in the person's mind just by their facial ex expressions. Right, uh, God, you can read that telepathically mm -hmm. or read the body language, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Con. So it says here, all right, this is the fifth passage on the first, the fourth verse. For I have seen it inscribed in the writing of Enoch that your sons shall be corrupted in fornication and shall do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. But they shall not be able to withstand Levi, for he shall wage the war of the Lord and shall conquer all your hosts. And they shall be few in number, 
divided in Levi and Judah. And there shall be none of you for sovereignty. Even as also our father prophesied in his blessing. All right, this is the sixth passage. It says, behold, I have told you all things that I may be acquitted of your sins. Mm -hmm. And I want to put a pin right there, like you said, uh, and that, that make me think of uh, what's that scripture? Uh, so that the blood that won't be on our hands, watchmen. Right, that's Ezekiel thirty-three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ezekiel. You, we, we we commanded, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Son of man, I made thee watchman, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to watch over the house of Israel, let them know their transgressions, their wicked deeds, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but it says here, behold, I have told you all things that I may be acquitted of your sins, so the blood won't be on his hands, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if ye remove from you your envy and all stiffness as a rose, as a rose shall my bones flourish in Israel. And as a lily, my flesh in Jacob and my odor shall be as the odor of Lebanus and as cedars shall holy ones be multiplied from me forever. And their branches shall stretch afar off. Then shall perish the seed of Canaan, and a remnant shall not be unto Amalek. And all the Cappadocians shall perish, and all the Hittites shall be utterly destroyed. Then shall fall the land of Ham, and all the people shall perish. Then shall all the earth rest from trouble and all the world under heaven from war. Then the mighty one of Israel shall glorify Shem for the Lord God shall appear on earth and himself save men. Verse six, then shall all the spirits of the sea be given to be trodden underfoot and men shall rule over wicked spirits. Then I, then shall I arise in joy and will bless the most high because of his marvelous works, because God hath taken a body and eaten with men and saved men. Got anything out on that? Uh -uh. Con. So it seems here that he's he's it's almost like he's prophesying and saying that once you take hold of this advice that I'm giving you, my children. Right. Then this is what's going to happen. Huh. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen in terms of in the end. And it says that the Lord shall. Uh, 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 yeah. So it says a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go to verse. Uh, we've got a couple more passages of the seventh. This is a seventh passage here. And it says here, verse one, and now my children obey Levi and Judah and be not lifted up against those two tribes mm -hmm. for from them shall arise unto you the salvation of God. For the Lord shall raise up from Levi as it were a high priest and from Judah as it were a king, God of man. He shall save all the Gentiles and the race of Israel. Therefore, I shall give you these commands that ye also may command your children that they may observe them throughout their generations. All right, this is the eighth passage. And it says, and when Simeon had made an end of commanding his sons, he slept with his fathers being and hundred and twenty years old, and they laid him in a wooden coffin to take up his bones to Hebron. And they took them up secretly during a war of the Egyptians. For the bones of Joseph, the Egyptians guarded in the tombs of the kings. So it seems like it's saying here that uh, they had a war with the Egyptians because Joseph's 
body, his bones were in a in a Egyptian coffin. Mm-hmm. And you know, in our custom, uh, if you go to the scriptures, we had to put you in the ground the same day. Yep. So you know, there's a cup that that right there shows a class of culture right there. But nevertheless, it says for the bones of Joseph, the Egyptians guarded in the tombs of the kings for the sorcerers told them that on the departure of the bones of Joseph, there should be throughout all the land darkness and gloom and an exceeding great plague to the Egyptians. So that even with a lamp, a man should not recognize his brother. God. Oh, that darkness. So that's referring to that darkness, right? Mm-hmm. That uh uh yeah, that befell um uh Egypt, Egypt. Right. And so they had their sorcerers, the Egyptians. And so if you know anything about the scriptures, uh you can you know draw those lines and connections to connect the dots. Uh, with the story that's in um in the Old Testament. Okay. All right, and this is the last the last passage uh passage nine, and it says, and the sons of Simeon bewailed their father, and they were in Egypt until the day of their departure by the hand of Moses. Okay. All right. oh, so crazy. Yes, sir. You got anything else up? Yeah. So uh, what we took away from that was uh. Simeon's uh battle was what uh the thing he was oh, battling with was uh envy jealousy and envy and jealousy envy and jealousy so that's what we all have to be on the lookout for don't envy because envy leads to jealousy then it gets in your mind and you all kind of stuff he said he couldn't even get no sleep he thinking about how you gonna get back at can get no rest it it that rage inside of you is not good for your body spiritually or physically. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen somebody, a street person, and how they look? I, I know some people, street people who are the same age I am, and they look like they about 70 years old because that street life is is yep. hell on the spirit oh. and on the body. So the same thing with jealousy and envy and anger and 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 trying to get revenge. No, no, that's not good for your spirit, man. So we gotta. You, you gotta be able to rebuke that spirit. Rebuke that spirit, because like I said, it was a spirit that ran away from him when he went to the Lord. That's see, all sin is spirits. It's hmm. unclean spirits. That's what we gotta understand. It's an unclean spirit. It's not you. It's not that person. It's the it's it's that entity that they've allowed to dwell inside that temple, unbeknownst to Darn. them. They just think they're mad. They don't know why they're mad because you got an unclean spirit on you. That's not that. And it's called, yep, con, and it's called attitude. Your right. attitude is not in the right position. And because of that, people think it's normal, but it's not normal it's in not the normal. kingdom of God. That's a sign that you have a spirit on you. If you mm-hmm. always have an attitude mm-hmm. with people, with family, etc., right? That is a spirit, and you need to do what we call some soul searching. Because you are the common denominator. It can't be everybody else, not you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It can't That's be everybody works. else. It's got to be you. You the common denominator. Um, you the common okay. denominator. And so I, I'm a big proponent for doing a daily self-assessment. Self-evaluation. Those situations and circumstances that you're frustrated, you're irritated about, mm-hmm. or you can't put your finger on it like today. I wasn't, I couldn't put my finger on something, but in my spirit, I felt bothered and disrupted and vexed in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I had to do a self-assessment to say, what is that? What is this feeling I'm feeling? I don't know. It's like it was a hidden spirit. Mm-hmm. So you have to pray against those things in order for them to be exposed, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is what we want to take from the text here um, on this mini series of Jacob and the 12 patriarchs y'all can go uh uh get the book etc but i definitely recommend you have a hard copy on hand because this word is gold all right i'm going to read the book of uh second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 it says examine yourselves whether Mm. you be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that jesus christ is in you except ye be reprobates so again, mm-hmm. exam- if you see these things going on in your spirit, examine yourself and see what Fine. you need to change. So with that being said, you got anything else up? 
No, nope, I don't got anything. Look forward to the next one, right? Uh, who's up? Uh, Judah next. No, not Judah. No, I'm talking about uh, Levi. Yeah, Levi. Levi. All right. Levi All right. is next. Be on the lookout for that one. I ain't got nothing Be on the else. Look out for that one. So, with that being said, I'm going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and 7, the Alabaster Box. Now, oh. when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he said at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. But me ye have not always. For in that she have poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her.